Hey guys, let's do a quick tutorial on stuff you can do on a wall to build up strength. This is good because if you're at home, maybe you have a ledge or a wall or a fence, something in your backyard, but you might not have the traditional gym equipment like a pull-up bar. And that's actually a good thing because it'll teach you how to use your body, coordinate your body better, and learn how to use your body as opposed to relying on isolated muscle efforts. You can do lap pull downs and stuff just relying on muscular force, but if you try to hang from the edge of a ledge, for example, okay, and you could do this on any, just be creative. There's a lot of walls with a ledge on top you can find. Even on a countertop, if it's high enough, you can do this. Or if you have the mobility to squat and crouch low enough, you could do this on the edge of a countertop, even if it's at this height or so. I'm mimicking different pulling patterns, but you don't have, number one, the grip of the padded grip of a lap pull-down machine or the perfect round diameter of a pull-up bar to grip perfectly in your hands. So now you have to figure out how to leverage your whole body. You have to use your whole body as a piece. So you can even just practice pull-ups on the ledge like this. And as simple as it looks, we've had a lot of people who can do pull-ups fairly easily and then we put them in a situation like this, really struggle to even do one ledge pull-up. Practice going, just hanging from it. You can practice switching arms. So you're doing one arm hangs, doing pull-ups. And then to get on top, and then lowering yourself back down is also tricky if you're not accustomed to using your body as a whole animal as a whole piece. When you're coming back down, a lot of times people will get to here and then just kind of jump down. But you figure out how to put yourself in easy position. So you're on a support on your hands. Now support yourself on your body. From here you have to figure out how to transition your body weight below the top without dropping down. So you go back into the hang and then you can just step back down. If you're more advanced and that's easy, you can try reaching for a higher wall. It's way out of reach. I can't, I can't jump and get that. So you can practice running off the wall and grabbing. The key here is timing, okay? Timing and placement of your foot. So when you're running at the wall, any movement that you wanna master, you need to master the rhythm of it. If you just run at the wall, you're just gonna go crashing into the wall. So you have to time your approach, sense of timing, sense of distance. So in a lot of our videos, we do games with tennis balls, and I mention that a lot. I mention accuracy, sense of distance, sense of timing, coordination, rhythm, because that all works its way into any movement, any athletic movement that you do. You need to be able to have an appropriate sense of your body weight, an appropriate sense of how far away from the wall you need to take off to place your foot in an optimal position where your body weight's over your foot so that you can unweight and lift up. It's not just running into the wall and then pushing off the wall hard. If you do that, you're gonna create some joint problems for yourself. You wanna have a sense of lightness, springiness, and elasticity bouncing off the wall. Transitioning back down, when you add the fear factor of the drop, makes it, even, makes it scarier. So can you implement the same technique even though you're up higher on a ledge? Lowering yourself down. So that you're safe. And absorbing the landing instead of just crashing down, putting too much stress on your joints. This is real fitness, go around, Move around your environment and don't rely on man-made fitness equipment as a practical evaluation of how fit you are. Because when you get into a real world, stuff isn't made for you like that. Go to a park, if there's a hill, take off your shoes, 
sprint up and down the hill. You'll notice that you have to pay attention to stuff like, you can't just take for granted like you would if you had cushioned shoes on that you can just run carelessly up the hill. Now you might step on something sharp, you might step on a rock. So it's not being reckless, but it's actually training yourself to run less recklessly. Because when you have padded shoes on, when you have equipment that's perfectly made for you, you can do things recklessly. Another example, lifting weights. If you're always just using the barbells and the dumbbell, chances are you're gonna create spinal problems, you're gonna create joint problems because you're gonna be able to lift it recklessly with bad form because you won't notice because it perfectly fits your grip. It's, it's easy to get leverage on those, um, on those tools. Whereas if you have to lift something awkward, even if it's significantly lighter, you still have to position yourself. See, look, this, she's not cooperating, so now you have to figure out how to, look how much closer I have to get underneath. I can't lift it really with bad form because it's not cooperating, I'll drop her. So I have to get under, I have to be careful, I want to protect her as well. So you have all these other factors in play, which makes it, um, <laughs> which makes it more difficult, but at the same time, it makes it safer because it's teaching you to move properly. Because the conditions are such that it's not favorable. It's not uh, training in an incubator. It's making you use your body in a natural way, forcing you to in a good way, to learn how to use your body naturally. How do I put this into a workout? Like if I was gonna do lat pull down and pull ups and rows at the gym, how can I substitute this? The beauty of these types of movements are that you don't have to plan out so carefully how you do it in order to get a balanced workout because you're doing, every movement you do is a whole body, is a whole body movement. You're using everything. There's no such thing as back day when you're doing this kind of movement because you're using, you're using every muscle in your body. You're using your body as one muscle. So if you're gonna do this type of workout, you don't need sets and reps. No animal in the wild does sets and reps or anything. No child when they're playing is, is counting sets and reps. You go until you, you have, you develop an intelligence in your body, a sense of I'm fatigued, I'm, I'm done for the day. You go by feeling. Don't always have to plan everything out. Start conservatively. If you're not used to paying attention to what you do, if you're used to just following a script, you start with maybe five minutes of playing around, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Rest as much as you need to. Don't treat it like a boot camp class. Treat it like a child playing. You're exploring, you're playing, you're curious, you're trying this, you're trying that. There's no race. It's just your process of development and it's individual for everybody. That's why there's no set prescription that's gonna work. I'm not gonna tell you, do five sets of this, five reps, because I don't know, maybe you just need to try it once or twice and then next day you can come back at it. Maybe that's way too easy for you. You can do it a hundred times, in which case you can go beyond that and do something more challenging, more complex. If you're practicing something like this wall pull-ups, then start with easier variations. Start with just seeing if you can get one foot on the wall and then lifting the other foot off the ground and holding that. If that's easy on both sides, then bring both feet up. Challenge yourself to hold it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Oh boy. Once you get that, switch to one arm, one leg, or one arm, two legs. If you can get that, switch to the other side. Then, and of course, resting a little bit in between as you need to, then practice the pull-ups. Then try getting from beneath the wall to above the wall, and then letting yourself back down. It's a gradual development like that, just like a baby learning how to walk. You're creeping, you're crawling, you stand up, you fall down. You stand up, you fall down. You use a ledge, you take a couple of steps, you fall down, and then eventually, learn how to walk. Treat it like a natural developmental process instead of a workout.